my name is Trinity and I'm here to talk to you guys about books and if you're here you're here to talk about books as well because that's what we do so this is the third time I have tried to film this video hopefully maybe the book gods just don't want me to put this video this challenge out in the world I don't know but I'm here to talk to you about my 2020 Pop Sugar Challenge. This is going to be a bit of a long video, so go ahead, grab a snack, get you some coffee or some tea, and let's get this party started. So the Pop Sugar Challenge is a challenge that I have a tendency to do every year. A lot of people have asked me, what's the Pop Sugar Challenge? I've never heard of this before. But Pop Sugar is a fairly popular <laughs> lifestyle blog that I have just always followed. And so I've always known about the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. And every year they put out this challenge, every year it's different, and they've started adding a little bit more thematically based stuff. So you'll see the word 20 pop up quite a bit towards the end of this. and. I am just going to basically run through the list and the prompts with you guys and the books I picked and what I thought about them, what happened with them, and try not to give like too much of a synopsis because I don't want this video to be two hours long. But I will try to give my rating or at least my thoughts on the book that I chose. Okay, the first prompt is a book that was published in 2020. No surprise to anybody, I read The Black Song by Anthony Ryan. <laughs> I love Valen Alsorna's story. I have been captivated since Blood Song. This is the second in the newest duology in Valen's story. I gave it five stars. Super action packed, super enjoyable. Love Valen, love Anthony Ryan. There you go. The next challenge was a book by a trans or non-binary author. I did find out that this author happens to be gender fluid, but I chose The Bone Witch by Ren Shapeko. And I ended up reading that entire trilogy. It was really good. It's young adult, so it does have a few tropes sprinkled throughout, but it is a very dark tale. And I really enjoyed T's characterization through the whole novel and how she grows and how she changes and how she realizes things are not what they seem. And she takes you on her journey of truth and discovery. And it's really, really such a fantastic trilogy. I would highly recommend it. The next challenge was to pick a book with... A great first line and I chose Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor and I'm pulling this book out because I'm actually going to read you the first line on the second Sabbath of Twelfth Moon in the city of weep a girl fell from the sky great first line right so I went with Strange the Dreamer and I love Lainey Taylor and I'm sorry about the truck that you can hear in the background <laughs> Strange the Dreamer was great Lainey Taylor's writing is flowery, it's tropey, and I don't care because she tells such beautiful stories, and Strange the Dreamer is no exception. I absolutely love this, and I can't wait to pick up News of Nightmares. The next challenge was a book about or by a woman in STEM, and I read Planet Fall by Emma Newman. You guys have seen my review of this book in one of my wrap-ups, and I really liked the first 90% of this novel. It was fantastic. Emma Newman, like I said, great writer. Uh, it's the last 10% that I kind of had an issue with and it's just because of how it wraps up. And it's weird. It's just weird. And did I feel like it fit the feel of the story? Somewhat, because you are dealing with someone who is who has a mental disorder. And it's not obvious right off the bat, but I do want to throw that out as a trigger warning. There is 
mental disorder talk and the main character is dealing with a mental disorder. So the way it wraps up kind of leaves you like yellow wallpaper feels. Is this what really happened or is she like, has she gone crazy? The next book that I chose was based on the prompt, a book that won an award in 2019 and Sadie by Courtney Summers won the Odyssey Award in 2019. And so I grabbed that one thinking I was going to get a very thrilling ride since it's, it is young adult thriller. And I did not because I did not enjoy Sadie's point of view. Again, this is a book I have talked about, so I just want to briefly say that I really enjoyed the interview parts of this book, but I did not enjoy Sadie's point of view. I did not enjoy how things came so easily to Sadie, and then I also found her character to be quite stale. And so I had a hard time meshing the two together and so I ended up giving it three stars. The next prompt is a book about a book club. And I read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And it was phenomenal. Five stars. I have recently read quite a few people say that this book is racist, but it's a commentary on racism and the South. So is it racist? Possibly, but it's also kind of meant to be as a poking fun at this is a problem because that's what Grady Hendrix does. I mean, the whole book deals with racism, mental disorders, and horror. So, <laughs> is it racist? Yeah, probably. Is it supposed to be? Yes, because it's a commentary on racism. The next prompt, I never did find a book to actually fill the slot, and it's a book on a subject I know nothing about. And I don't know what I don't know, so I just keep in mind, I started this in August. So there was a lot of leeway I gave myself in these, and part of that being I didn't fill that slot. And if I had to DNF something, I didn't find a book or to replace it. So moving on to the next prompt, a book set in a city that has hosted the Olympics and I chose Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. Again, I DNF'd that book. I didn't like it. I, it had a Groundhog Day aspect to it, so I was prepared for repetition, but what I wasn't prepared for was how slowly it was going to move. And I've heard very great things about this novel, but with the issues that I have, I just couldn't make myself sit down and read it. It felt like a chore and I DNF'd it. Now this next word I'm going to butcher and it is a Bildungsroman, which basically, I, I looked up the definition of it. It basically is a coming of age with, you know, a few more aspects to it, but I chose Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card and I don't regret it. <laughs> I gave that book five stars. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I, planes, trains, and automobiles. We're just gonna have a whole shebang going on. Sorry. I loved Ender's Game, but I aged up the characters in my mind because I really just, couldn't get on board with them being six years old and they don't read like they're six years old at all. So I, it was fantastic. And if you can read it and like age it up yourself in your mind, then go for it. The next prompt is the first book I touched on my shelf with my eyes closed. And I had to cheat a little bit here because I touched the third book in a series and the series starts with Labyrinth by Kate Moss. I DNF'd this one as well. I am a huge fan of James Rowland's The Blood Gospel. And I, <laughs> I didn't realize the premises of this novel and The Blood Gospel were so close together. And I, they... Kate Moss just didn't quite write as well as James Rollins did. 
And so I was like, oh, this is so close to the blood gospel, but it's not even half as good as the blood gospel. And so I couldn't read it. I, I DNF'd it on that basis. Was the writing good? Yes. So if you haven't read the blood gospel or if, you know, those close ties to other stories don't bother you, then you might definitely like this one. The next prompt is a book with an upside down image on the cover and I chose The Beautiful by Renee Adia. And I liked this book. I gave it a three stars, but there were so many issues with it that I'm not going to continue with the series. And my main issue was the main character and she was very whiny and I, I didn't like it. And I went into detail in that in my uh, November wrap up. So I'm not going to go into too much detail now. It was three stars. So if you can deal with a main character like that, then I would recommend these because the writing is very good. The setting is fantastic and vampires don't play a big role in this, at least this first book. So you might enjoy it. The next prompt was a book with a map and I picked Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo and I loved it. You guys know I loved it. You guys know I am in love with Leigh Bardugo's writing and she's been a solid five stars across the board for me. I haven't read the Grishaverse yet, but this is set in the Grishaverse, but I haven't read the original trilogy. And I love the characters. I love the heist. I love, I love Six of Crows. It's so good. I would, I'd recommend this in Crooked Kingdom. The next one I read, <laughs> uh, the prompt is a book recommended by your favorite book blog. And I'm calling out Sam for this one because I read Malice by John Gwen. This is one of Sam's favorite series. She talks about it all the time. And I have to say, I was very surprised. I don't like the setup novels to fantasy series. They are always boring. They're the setup. They're, they're, they're there. <laughs> and trilogies is not quite so bad because you have to have some story. When it's a series that has multiple books beyond a trilogy, it's not so much beginning, middle, and end. It's the setup. But this one was a five star because it surprised me. It was really, really good. And now I'm going to call myself out for being the big fat Bioware nerd that I am. The next one is an anthology and I read To Venter Nights. It is multiple authors, but they are the writers of Dragon Age. And I thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm a huge Dragon Age fan and the fact that these stories are all censored around what could come for Dragon Age 4 really, really gets me excited for the next game. Not that I'm not excited. I am always excited for any Dragon Age content, but this one was really, really good. The next prompt is a book that passes the Bestel test. And I chose Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. The Lunar Chronicles, I've talked about them, I've talked about them recently, so I'm not going to talk about them again. They're great. If you like young adult, pick them up. The next prompt is a book with the same title as a movie or TV show, but unrelated. I chose Legend by Marie Lu. I just DNF'd this book. I don't know if it's because I am not in the right age range for this novel but this novel read very young and I do like young adult. So I think because this is the first novel that Marie Lou wrote, or I think it is at least, this was not her best work. I do want to pick up more by Marie Lou. I, I, I plan to read the kingdom of back and I have the young elites in my shelf over here. So hopefully, I do end up liking some Marie Lou. I just did not like Legend. The next prompt was a book by an author with flora or fauna in their name and I chose The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. We all know I love fame. I don't need to talk about this book anymore. It was great. 
The next prompt was a book published in the same month as my birthday. So my birthday is in February and the book I chose was All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I thought this book was so fun. I really, really enjoyed it. I liked the magic system. I liked the political aspects of it. I liked the pirates and mermaids and the sea adventure. It was really, really good. And Amora was a great main character. The next prompt is a book with only words to cover, no graphics or images. I did choose Four to Score by Janet Ivanovich, but I have to admit that I've had no desire to pick these books back up. That's part of the reason that I put it on this list is to hopefully reignite my love for Janet Ivanovich, but I have not really wanted to read any crime novels lately. They haven't appealed to me in the least bit, and I have loved this series from the beginning, so I don't know if it's a genre I'm growing out of or a genre I am no longer interested in, but I have had problems not only with Janet Ivanovich, but Kelly Armstrong, who happens to be one of my favorite authors. So I might pick this up. I do know that it is available at my library on audiobook, so I might still pick it up, but I'm not sure if I will finish this before the end of the year. The next book is a book I really hope that I can pick up soon, and it is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. The prompt is a book with a pun in the title. And I love Sherlock Holmes, so I'm really interested to see a book that makes a play on Sherlock Holmes with a female main character. I think it will be interesting, but I just haven't had a chance to get around to that one. The next prompt is a book featuring one of the deadly sins. I chose Bared to You by Sylvia Day. Still have not gone around to reading that one. A book with a robot or cyborg or AI character. I chose Crest by Marissa Meyer, again, a Lunar Chronicles. I don't usually double up on authors for the challenges like this, but because I started in August, I was trying to also work my way through some series. And Crest was fantastic. The ending was amazing. I really love these books. The next prompt was a book with a bird on the cover. I chose Year One by Nora Roberts. Why I read a book about a pandemic in the middle of a pandemic, I will never know the answer to that. It was fantastic, but it also kind of crushed my soul a little bit. <laughs> the next prompt is a fictional book about a world leader, and I chose a fictional book about a fictional world leader and read The Wicked King by Holly Black. The best fae novel I have read to date, bar none, period. A book with gold, silver, or bronze in the title, I read Vision in Silver by Anne Bishop. Now this is one of my favorite series of all time, and I just happened to be able to plug this in for the prompt. Awesome. A book by a woman of color, I chose An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I love these books. I have continued on with this series. I am on the third book and I hope I get to read the third book by the end of the year. That way when the fourth book is released, is it released? It might be released now, but by the time the fourth book is released, I can go ahead and pick it up. Mm -hmm. The next prompt is a book with four star or better rating on Goodreads and I chose The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. Y'all, I have gone into detail about how hard this book was to read for me. So I don't want to like harp on this book because it is great. There are so many things to love about it. I love Methy, which I don't even think I talked about. Methy is an animal companion in this story. I think Methy was so fantastic. My issues stemmed from the multiple perspectives and switching from first person and to third person and back and but for most people this book is a fantastic read and I think that most people will also think this is a fantastic read 
Okay, the next prompt is a book I meant to read in 2019 that does not mean it was released in 2019. But I read The Broken Eye by Brent Weeks because I love Brent Weeks and I love the Lightbringer series and I'm gonna continue it and shh, don't tell me that the next books are bad. <laughs> this next one I did take a little bit of leeway with because I <laughs> didn't like the prompt. So the prompt was to read a book involving social media and I read The Haunted by Bentley Little because there's email messages and phone calls that come from not people and I didn't I don't like books about social media so this was me plugging in a prompt you can give me a half point if you want to for this one that's fine the next prompt was a book with a book on the cover and I read Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane this is one of those books that while I liked it I really enjoyed it while I was reading I don't plan to continue on with the series because it was a premise that was okay to me. It sounded great, but whenever I got into it and realized what all was going on, it, I was just kind of eh, about it. And it's about the Library of Alexandria. What if it didn't burn down? What if they become the great power? You know, knowledge is power, all that stuff. And again, it sounded great, but whenever I started reading it, I was just like, okay, that was a good book and like set it aside. You know what I mean? The next book I read was a medical thriller, Unnatural Causes by Don Eastman. I did like this book. It was a solid story. However, it's one of those that's just a good story. Like you read it, it's a good story. You set it aside, you're done with it, moving on. There was nothing groundbreaking about it or anything like that. I gave it three stars. I liked it. The next one is a book I hope to get to before the end of the year. I don't think I will though. And that is a book with a made up language, Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo, The Grishaverse. I need to start this. I haven't yet, but we'll see if I finish it before 2020. The next prompt is a book set in a country beginning with C. I chose Dreams of God and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. I had an issue. I did DNF this book. My issue was my problem though. It had nothing to do with the book. I read these first two books years ago. So when I went to pick up Dreams of God and Monsters, I didn't remember what was going on and I did not want to reread the rest of the series. And so <clears throat> I ended up DNFing it and again, no fault of Lainey Taylor. It's mine for not picking up this series for years and years. The next prompt is a book with a title that caught my attention. I have to tell you, if you have Strange in your title, I'm interested. Strange the Dreamer, Strange Candy. I picked up Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw, and I'm so glad I did because this book was so fun. I have the next one, which I think is Deadly, no, I'm thinking of Naomi Novik. Anyway, I have the next one. It's right there. And these are about Van Helsing's daughter, granddaughter, who continues his practice of working with monsters and giving them the medical care that they need. Strange practice. I, again, adored it. So fun definitely worth reading. The next challenge was a book with a three word title and I picked All is Fair by Emma Newman. Again, continuing series that I had already started. This is the Split World series. I believe it is book three. These are great. They're fae. I really enjoy them. If you want to hear me talk about them in more detail, I do actually talk about them in one of my wrap-ups. The next book is a book with a pink cover and I chose Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. It is available in my library so I will probably pick it up before the end of the year. I just haven't got to it because I don't like to read nonfiction, and I have a tendency to set it off to the side for as long as I can. I am intrigued because it's Tina Fey. We'll see. 
The next prompt was a Western, and I chose a Western fantasy, Wake of Vultures by Lila Bowen. I really enjoyed it. Guys, it's really dark. There's a lot of trigger warnings, and I would look them up before you pick up this book because sexual assault, gender identity, um, all kinds of things pop up in this book that I would really like to warn people of before they pick it up. I, however, did enjoy it. I really, really liked the characters. I liked the magic. It's based off of Native American lore, which we all know is to me because I am Native American and I like to see more Native American representation. Now, while the story is Native American, the main character is half Indian, half Black. So there's that as well. The next prompt is a book by or written about a journalist. And I chose Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I thought it had a lot of shock value. I saw who done it right off the bat and I was not fooled by the red herring. I did still give it a three because the writing is good. And I do plan to pick up more Gillian Flynn along the way with Gone Girl. It just wasn't my favorite book. The next prompt was a banned book, and I still don't know why I decided that I wanted to read 1984 again. It was okay the first time I read it, it was okay the second time I read it, and I, I did almost DNF it this time, but I, I went ahead and pushed through, and 1984. <laughs> oh, we all know what it's about, and that's my banned book. The next prompt was a past pop sugar challenge. Oh, so I chose a book with a color in the title so that I could plug in written and read by Anne Bishop in this because it was a book I had already read. This did become one of my favorite series. So I'm glad that I plugged that into that slot there. The next prompt is a book written by an author in their 20s, and I chose Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. Guys, this is a must-read novel. Must read. <sighs> if you're like me and you like dark things, this is a must-read because this is about a girl who is pretty much on death row, and she gets... She kills a guy. That You know this. That's why she's been imprisoned. And she's telling her story to this family who finds out the truth about what she's been through. And it's beautiful. It's heartbreaking. It's dark. It's crass. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. The next prompt was a book with 20 the number, or 20, the word, in the title, and I chose 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. I did already talk about this book before. It was very King-esque, which I did not enjoy. There were some stories that I did enjoy. I wish I would have written them down because I got it from the library and then I forgot to write the stories that I liked down. But there were like three or four that I did enjoy but a lot of them I didn't because they were very King-esque. The next prompt was a book with a character with a vision impairment, hashtag 2020. And I happened to read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, so I did just plug this in for that prompt. Also, if you guys know of any main characters with a vision impairment, I would like to hear what you would have plugged into this because that seems to be a very uncommon thing. The next one was a book set in Japan, and I read Across the Nightingale Floor by Leon Hearn. I really, really enjoyed this. Even though there is some insta-love, I was really enjoying the setting. I was really enjoying the mythology. I think I will probably continue with this series because I really, really enjoyed this first novel. Okay, the next prompt. A book set in the 20s and I reread The Diviners by Libba Bray because I read The Diviners a couple of years ago and then never continued with the series but I really enjoy Libba Bray's writing so I was really gung-ho to get back into this 
and I gave it the same rating that I gave it before, which is a four star. And this is a little bit dark, which again, I like dark. So some <laughs> having this list might be the epitome of darkness for some people. I don't know. But <clears throat> I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I recommend this series. And if you're into the supernatural magic, stuff like that, definitely, definitely give these a try. The next prompt is a book by an author who has written more than 20 books, and I chose The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. I have not yet had a chance to read it. I do have it sitting over here somewhere, and I do plan to read it. I just don't know if I'm going to get to it in 2020. If not, it will be one of the first books that I read in 2021, aside from Elantris, which is part of my Sanderson read-along. The next prompt is a book with 20 letters in the title, and I read A Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan. I, I'm going to go ahead and say I didn't like this book, but my, I did give it a three stars. Generally, if I give it three stars, that means I liked it, but it had problems. And I really just didn't like this book. And I might go back to Goodreads and change it to a two because... The repetition in this book is astounding. The magic is non-existent and the writing is beautiful though. It's beautiful. And the first part of this book, like the first third of this book is great, but then it falls into a cycle and the cycle is what got me. I, I couldn't stand it. The next prompt is a book published in the 20th century and I reread one of my favorite sci-fi books of all time which was Brave New World by Aldous Huxley and I loved it just as much this time as I did whenever I was in high school and I think I will probably continue to reread this throughout my life. The next prompt is a book from a series with 20 plus books. And I said not too long ago that this series was like 20 books long. I, it's almost 30. And I chose Serpentine by Laurel K. Hamilton because it is the next book that I have not read in the Anita Blake series, but I have fallen kind of out of love with this series, guys. As much as I love Laurel K. Hamilton's earlier work, I really haven't enjoyed many of the Anita, Bla Anita Blake novels that have come along in the last few years. Part of that is my saltiness of not getting a Mary Gentry novel, but part of it is we're on 30 books and she's done. The character's done. Like, there's not much more she can do. Time to move on. And the final prompt is a book with a main character in their 20s, and I read The Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, and great to end on a great note because I loved The Ninth House. I really like Darlington's point of view, and I really like that this is going to be a series because I really want to know what's going to happen with Darlington and Alex moving forward. And I thought this was a great start to a series. Now, would, had this been a standalone, I don't think I would have given it four stars. And I know that a lot of people thought it was going to be a standalone. But while this is also adult, it does still have a young adult feel while reading it. So keep that in mind if it's something that you want to pick up. But that was my 2020 Pop Sugar Challenge. I hope I have turned you on to some new books or, you know, helped you decide if you wanted to bump a book up on your TBR or take it off of your TBR because there's nothing wrong with that. But I thank you for sitting and listening to me talk for so long and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can definitely give me a thumbs down. I, I don't care. But you know, let me know what books you would have added for these prompts because I am still always looking for new books to read and I had some trouble with some of these prompts. <laughs> but have a great day, have a great weekend.